hey, let's talk about how to date like Padre Pio. Padre Pio, that's not right. Hey, I'm Tanner Kalina. This is Ascension Presents. Saint Joseph, yes, my dude. God entrusted his son into the care of a man and woman. Think about that. He became dependent. All of history of salvation, his plan of redemption was dependent upon a man and woman. That is wild. So we have a lot to learn from them. And Saint Joseph, you know, he raised the boy Jesus. And so a lot of Jesus, his masculinity comes from Saint Joseph. When we imitate Jesus, we are imitating aspects of Saint Joseph's masculinity. And so we have a lot to learn from this man. As we're dating and we're, we're thinking about marriage and starting our families, we should aspire to be like the guy who is the pillar of families. And Saint Joseph is the exemplar of six particular virtues, justice, chastity, strength, prudence, obedience, and faithfulness. As the pillar of families, we should take this as a clue that these are the six virtues that we should focus on to become men who are worthy suitors of the women in our lives. So let's take a look at each of these virtues, how St. Joseph exemplified them, and how we can start to exemplify them in our dating lives. Coolio, Coolio, Brulio. St. Joseph, the Bible describes him as a just man. St. Joseph, the most just. When you think about St. Joseph, and when you think about when he found out that Mother Mary was pregnant with child, what do you think he was thinking? Matthew's Gospel gives us clues that he tried to separate from her quietly, unwilling to put her to shame. I think the 2022 dude in us immediately goes, oh, well he thought that she slept with another man so he was just trying to divorce from her. And since adultery was punishable by death back then and he was a just man, he didn't want her to die, he just wanted to divorce from her quietly. That is an interpretation, yes, but that's not the most commonly held interpretation in the church today. Think about it, St. Joseph was gonna marry Mother Mary. He was already betrothed to her. He knew Mother Mary really well. He knew that she was a holy woman, the holiest woman of all time. He knew her heart. And so he believed her when she said that she was conceived by the Holy Spirit. But out of reverence for her, he felt himself to be unworthy to be with her. That's the most commonly held interpretation and we have a lot to learn from this interpretation. When you've been wronged in a relationship, how have you responded? Have you been like St. Joseph and assumed the best in her? Or did you assume the worst? Did you, did you gossip about her? Did you throw a tantrum? Love isn't a matter of if you'll get hurt. Love is a matter of when you'll get hurt. And when we get hurt, we need to be men who respond justly. What is justly? The 2022 dude in us might be like, oh, the gauntlet, punishment, justice. But justice is doing what we ought, not necessarily what we feel. It maintains reverence despite the presence of conflict. We need to be men who maintain reverence for the women in our lives despite things getting hard here and there. All right, St. Joseph, the most chaste. Chastity, yay, chastity. When you're married to the perpetual virgin, that kind of also means you're a perpetual virgin. I think a lot of us think of St. Joseph maybe as this old guy, you know, we might see this old, discrepant, hunched over guy from paintings, but that's not how the earliest church viewed St. Joseph, and that's not the commonly seen view of St. Joseph in the church today. We believe that St. Joseph was probably actually a spry young dude. He wasn't chaste, because he was disinterested and old. He was chaste because he really had this virtue of chastity. He provided for Mother Mary solely out of selfless love, certainly with no utilitarian motives. Likewise, we need to be men who provide and don't expect anything in return, who give and don't count the cost. And we need to be men who safeguard our women's chastity, yes, but our chastity as well because chastity doesn't end once you're married. Abstinence does, but not chastity. That's a virtue that you have to maintain within marriage. So we need to practice it now. St. Joseph, the most strong. Strength is the virtue we most associate with masculinity. And St. Joseph was the exemplar of strength. So guys, be jacked. St. Joseph, the most prudent. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not talking about physical strength, although who doesn't want to be yoked? I'm talking about spiritual strength. Porn and masturbation are the biggest attacks on guys' spiritual strength today. The extent to which we can be strong against sexual temptations is the extent to which we can be strong for our future families. The family goes where the man goes. If the man is not in order, then the family is not 
in order. So if you're a man and this is a struggle of yours, if you're dating, you need to get this under control ASAP. Don't bring a woman into this. And if you're not dating and this is a struggle of yours, don't date. You don't date until you have this conquered and under control. There are so many good resources out there for you to take advantage of. Take advantage of those. Work your spirit out. Get strong. St. Joseph the most just, the most chaste, the most strong. St. Joseph the most prudent. Matthew's gospel has so many examples of, of St. Joseph acting swiftly, decisively, and accurately. Whenever he heard the Holy Spirit tell him what to do, he did it. He wasn't wishy-washy. He wasn't timid. He was a man of decisiveness and boldness. He wasn't impulsive. His decision to separate from Mary quietly wasn't an impulsive, quick decision. He wasn't like, all right, I'm out. No, it was born of gradual resolve and pondering. And then he moves whenever he feels ready. Luckily, the Holy Spirit told him, yo, dude, don't do that. But he was ready to move on his decisions. Likewise, we need to be men who move. We listen for the voice of God, and then we move when we hear it. St. Joseph knew that wasting his time was wasting Mary's time. We need to be men who aren't wasting our woman's time. We're not dragging them along. Be punctual, be decisive, be accurate. Cool? St. Joseph, the most obedient. St. Joseph traveled 430 miles across a desert to a land where his ancestors were held as slaves for 200 years. What? That's extreme. 430 miles. This wasn't San Diego to San Francisco. This wasn't the PCH with acai bowls on every corner and killer views. This was across a barren desert in the dead of winter with robbers, you know, here and there, and an infant who, oh yeah, was God. St. Joseph was so extremely obedient to God, and likewise, we need to be obedient to God. And that includes his bride, the church. The more obedient we are to the church, the more free we are to love. The church exists to give us the guardrails to keep us on the path to true love. And the more obedient we are to the church, the more our relationships reflect the relationship of Jesus and his church, which is true love. And finally, we've gone through justice, chastity, strength, prudence, obedience, faithfulness. St. Joseph, the most faithful. The reason we don't know that much about St. Joseph isn't because he wasn't important. It's because of how humble and faithful he was. He was a faithful father to Jesus, a faithful spouse to Mary, and a faithful tikton. He was a faithful worker in what he did. Likewise, we need to be men who are faithful. So many problems in our society exist today because men have failed to be faithful spouses or faithful fathers. And whenever that happens, it doesn't just affect the family involved, but has a trickle effect across society. We need to be men who are faithful, who commit to our spouses and commit to God. The second manliest thing you can do in this life is commit to a woman and lay down your life and be faithful to her. The manliest thing you can do is commit to God and be faithful to God. Let's be manly. Let's be masculine. Let's be faithful. Let's be just. Let's be chaste. Let's be strong. Let's be obedient. Let's be prudent. Men, whenever we take on these virtues, we go from boys to men. We become suitors for an awesome woman. And women expect this out of men. Fulton Sheen once said that to a great extent, the level of any civilization is the level of its womenhood. Women, you can do a whole lot for this world simply by expecting men to be men. Don't settle. And men, don't give women a reason to settle. Be virtuous. Be like St. Joseph. Thanks, y'all. Peace. Strength is the, is the, the church exists to give us the, the, um, the guardrails, that's what these things are. When you're married to the most perpet, that the, these little temptations is the extent to which we, be, we,